In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the different sine and cosine values based off of our new you know, ability to evaluate trig functions in any, in any angle, okay? So at any position. So what, we're going to, what I've done here is I've set up the Cartesian plane in quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we're going to have the sine, cosine, and tangent values in each of those. We're going to base this all off of sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta, and their definitions that were given to us in one of our previous videos. Okay? Remember, the R value is always positive. Okay? The R value, if, if it's anything other than zero, is going to be a positive number. Okay? That being said, we can look at this. Now, in quadrant one, Okay, in quadrant one, both our x value is positive and the y value is positive. So, being that r is always a positive value, the sine of theta is going to be the y value, which is positive divided by a positive, or a positive value. Okay? Cosine of theta, if it's in quadrant one, that means we have a positive x and when we take a positive number divided by r, which is always positive, you're going to get a positive number again. Now, tangent, you know from the quotient identity of sine divided by cosine, we're going to have a positive divided by a positive or another positive value. So in summary, quadrant one has sine, cosine, and tangent values that are all positive. Okay? Let's move on to quadrant number two. Now, the only thing that's different uh, in quadrant two is that now we have an x value that's going to be negative, and that's going to affect us a couple different ways. Okay? So, looking at sine theta, which is y divided by r again, the y value in quadrant two is still positive. Okay? So, it's going to be a positive divided by a positive, or a positive value. Okay? So, the sine theta is positive, not only in quadrant one, but also in quadrant two. Okay? Let's look at cosine. Now, cosine is our x value divided by the r. r, again, is always positive, but now we have a negative value divided by a positive, so cosine of theta is going to be negative. Tangent is our y divided by our x, or sine divided by cosine. It's positive divided by a negative, which is going to give us a negative number. We're going to have a negative tangent value, a negative cosine value, and a positive sine value in the second quadrant. Okay. Looking to quadrant number three. Okay. In quadrant number three, not only is our x value negative, but now our y value is also negative. Okay. So looking at sine theta, y, our negative value divided by r, which is always positive, negative divided, uh, negative divided by positive is going to give me a negative value. Cosine of theta is our x value divided by r, x is negative, r is positive, so cosine here is going to be negative. But when we get to tangent of theta, we have a negative divided by a negative, or a positive value. Okay? When we look over here into quadrant number four, our sine value is again the y value. y is still negative. Negative divided by a positive is negative. The cosine of theta, cosine is our x value. Now we switch back to the positive side. So we're going to have a positive divided by a positive, or some positive value. And the tangent value here is going to be a negative value divided by a positive value, which is going to give us a negative value. We're going to take the given information of tangent of theta is equal to a negative 5 over 4, and the cosine of theta is greater than 0. We're going to take that information and find sine of theta and the secant of theta. Now, what I've posted over here is our value chart that we just looked at in our previous segment, uh, telling us the sine, cosine, and tangent values in our, our four different quadrants. Okay? So we're going to take and use that information to help us solve as well. But let's start with the information that we're given. The tangent of theta is a negative 5 fourths. The important thing that I'm looking for here is whether it's positive or negative. Right now, tangent of theta is negative. Okay? The other big piece here is that the cosine of theta is greater than zero. 
And if anything is greater than zero, it's a positive value. So here we have cosine of theta is positive. Okay? Let's take and see what we can find just given these two pieces of information over using our reference. Okay? So first off, we've got the tangent of theta is a negative value. Tangent of theta is positive in quadrant one, so definitely not going to be quadrant one. It's negative in quadrant two, so it's got a possibility there. I'm going to put a check mark there. Tangent of theta is positive in quadrant three, so it's not there. And the tangent of theta is positive in four, so uh, it's negative in four, so I'm going to put a check mark there as well. So we've taken, and from our four quadrants, we've limited it, we've limited it down to two using simply the fact that we know that the tangent of theta is negative. It can either be in quadrant two or in quadrant four. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to use our second piece of information, this cosine of theta, and it's positive. Now, it can only be either quadrant two or quadrant four after the first piece. So looking here, now cosine of theta in quadrant two is negative, which is not what we wanted, leaving it, and cosine of theta is positive, in quadrant four with a negative tangent, so we need to be in quadrant four right now. That means that we have a setup here somewhere like this, okay? And from our initial side to our terminal side, that's our theta value that we're looking for. So we know that we're in quadrant four. Let's use some right triangle trig to help us figure out our other three values. Now the tangent of theta is always a comparison of y to x. Okay, it's always a comparison of y to x. Uh, so right now what we have is here's quadrant four. If we form this right triangle, our y value was a negative five and the x value is a positive four. Now we've got y, uh, we've got y, we've got x, what we need here is r. r again is equal to the square roots of x squared, or positive 16, plus the square roots, uh, plus a negative 5 squared, or positive 25. 16 and 25 is 41, so r is equal to the square roots of 41. Okay, so I'm just going to write that in here. From this information, we're supposed to find the sine of theta and the secant of theta. Well, let's use what we know. We know that the sine of theta in this new realm is our y value divided by the r value. Where again, the r value is always positive. So sine of theta here is equal to the y, negative 5, divided by square roots of 41, which is equal to negative 5 square roots of 41 over 41. Okay. So there's our sine value. And what we need now is a secant of theta value. Now if you remember, secant of theta is the inverse of cosine of theta. And secant of theta the can of theta is going to be equal to the r value divided by, well, cosine is your x divided by r, so this is r divided by your x value. r value, square root of 41, divided by our x value of 4. 